Zoe, when I talk about desserts and retro desserts, you're thinking of creme brulee, chocolate souffle. Crepe Suzette has to be right up there. Right up there. It's one of those classic dishes. If you went to a big hotel, the waiter would come along with a Gerudon oh. trolley. He would make the crepes in front of you and then make the crepe Suzette and then serve oh, it for you. It's theatre. It is, it is. And it's so easy to make. Basically, it's just pancakes with orange sauce with some brandy on it. I mean, that's basically what it is. And what I'll do to start with is I'll get uh, three eggs and I'll crack them into my bowl here like this. We're going to make yep. the batter up, which is pretty easy to do. And what I've got is uh, 500 mils of milk. And so if you can pour that in while I whisk the eggs up. Now, a lot of the times when I make a, if I make a pancake batter, I'll throw the flour in. But when I make a, a crepe mixture, I want it nice and thin. In goes uh, about 50 grams of sugar, which will go straight in. There we go. And I just break that up, make sure you get all the sugar in there. I've also got 250 grams of uh, flour, which I'm going to get you yeah. to sift straight into here for me. And the reason I sift it, we want it nice and light and fluffy. That's it. Throw Sorry it in there. That. That's all right. It's falling out. It sort of goes a bit <laughs> everywhere, but that's OK. And I'll whisk that as you uh, put that together. There we go. Stir it around. Now, normally when you make a crepe batter like this, you are, or a pancake batter, they recommend that you rest it. And because we've whisked it up, we've sort of stretched the flour, becomes nice, it becomes tough in a way. But, you know, if I'm making this at home, I'll just get, get it straight into the pan. So I'll just give that a bit of a whisk. Now, I've got my beautiful tea fowl crepe pan here. Nice. You can tell it's a crepe pan because it has very low sides. The idea is just for making crepes and you want to look after it, put it in the, uh, in the pantry, put a little paper towel over the top of it so nothing scratches it. Yep. Now, what I'll do, Zoe, instead of just pouring all straight onto it, what I do is I put a little bit of uh, oil onto a small okay. plate or bowl like this and then with a paper towel or a little, little cloth, make sure it's clean, I just dab a little bit like that and I just okay. rub it around the outside. So it's very evenly dispersed that way. Okay. It, exactly. It just gives it a very thin film. And then I'm assuming you do this after each... Crepe, you do it again. Oh, you do it again. You just put a little bit okay. on there. Now, this is a non stick pan, so you don't really need much of it. Yeah. All you need to do is pour a little bit of crepe mixture into the middle there. About a ladle full will be enough. And with the handle, you just gently smooth it all the way around like this. Now, what I'll do is I'll turn this up a little bit to about a medium sort of heat. What you want to do with the crepes is cook them nice and evenly and then flip it over. I do it with my hand, but I'm going to use a palette knife to flip it over. What we want to do is, I'm going to have a little bit of colour with it, but traditionally with crepes, there's no colour at all, but I like a little bit of golden with it. So we'll make a few of these up, which I've done for years, and then we'll make our crepes with it. Zoe, the last crepe is coming off. There we go. I'll slide that onto the Hello. pan here. Now move that over and switch pans. Okay. You've got the zest going I'm there. And once you've zest. zested that, I want you to juice those two oranges okay. and uh, cut the segments out of the other one. Okay. Now I've got a nice amount of butter here. Look at that. Into the pan it goes. I'll take a little bit of that because even for me, that's a bit much. You're I'll put joking. it in there. Can you believe what he just did? He took out butter. I've never seen that in the four years we've been working together. Here we go. How about I put a little bit more in just to make sure? <gasps> just because I was worried that maybe you think I might, might not be keeping my sort of the bargain up. There we go. I'm going to put some sugar in here as well. Look, it's about 50 to 60 grams of caster sugar. And how's the juice going? Going, because I'm doing it. That's the next part of it that we need. Ah. Now put in some of the zest there, about a oh, teaspoon oh. of zest. Got you working there, didn't oh. I? You'll need, all, you'll need it to work a lot because there's going to be a lot of calories in this dish. Now yes, in right. goes the orange, and you see that all comes to the boil there. The orange is a really important part of this dish. It actually makes up the sauce. But the trick is not to put too much in at once. Fantastic. And I'm going to add a little bit of Cointreau in there and a little bit of cognac as well. Just pour a little bit in there for some adult flavours. And if you have a little look, we'll flame it up. Here we go. I'll just put a little bit in there. You can see that burns off. Now, this is the best bit. You get the crepes. Normally, what you would do is put the whole crepe into the pan yeah. and then fold it up. That can be a little bit awkward. So what I recommend a lot of people do, if you're doing it at home, is fold the uh, crepe into a quarter like that. Just dip it in the sauce there on the side. And then you can put four of them into the pan at once. And the crepes will help to soak up a lot of that liquid as that liquid reduces down and becomes some of the sauce. Beautiful. And you can see I've got the perfect size pan. Now, what you could do if you want a palette knife or a set of tongs, you could turn them over. I like to use a set of tongs. I know I'm using a metal palette knife in a non-stick pan, which is a big no-no, although I know what I'm doing, so I'm going to make sure that I don't scratch it. Another thing you could also use is just use a spoon on the side here and just spoon the, uh, the sauce over the top of the crepes if you want to 
do it that way now. They move do that look impressive. Do you know what, Adrian? I had my honeymoon in Paris. And I can remember we had crepes suzettes as one of our dinners. And they were just, I mean, they're very impressive and they're very over the top, but it's very French and just something amazing about it as well. Fantastic. You just have one. You just don't have all four. <laughs> we're going to have a few of these now. Just scrape that out there like that. We've got the last one in there. Make a little bit of mess. In goes the orange segments. I'll add a little bit more uh, of the cognac in there for some more adult flavour. Stir that around. So what I'll do is over here, I'll just put some of the orange segments on top there like that. Plenty of that sauce. Can you smell the orange in there? It's fantastic. The orange is gorgeous. I can smell the alcohol. I'm just going to pour <laughs> the rest of the sauce on there. Looks great. It's a great retro dish. I want to get some of the orange segment. I've got to kind of make it as healthy as I possibly can. There's nothing healthy about this. Mm. That sauce on top of it as well. Nice and sweet. Plenty of crepe in there. You'd have to say, does this remind you of your honeymoon? <laughs> That's however a long ago, thing, I guess. however long ago that was. <laughs> Ten years ago. You know what? It is very sweet, Adrian. Very, very sweet. But you know, it is about retrofit. And sometimes when things are made so perfectly, you don't need to tamper with them. Three awesome retro dishes, Adrian. Is this taking you back to somewhere special? I'm going right back home to the 70s, where I belong. <laughs>